Okay, hi, welcome today to our English class. Um, so if you remember, we have been looking at food. We've been talking lots about vocabulary to do with food. We know how to use our countable and uncountable nouns. And we've talked about going to a restaurant. We know how to order at a restaurant. We know how to go to a food market and ask for what we want and how much of something that we want. And we also know how to write recipes. So we know how to share um, a way of making a food with someone. We know how to tell someone how to make something. So we've been talking lots about food and we're going to keep continuing. Um, but with this lesson, we're talking about um, fruit and vegetables and, you know, the part of a plant um, and watching a short little video. So if you can see here, uh, we've got fruit and vegetables native to our country. So that means that there are some fruit and vegetables in the world that are just, they come just to one country. So, for example, in Colombia, you can find this banana, passion fruit, curuba, or the lulu fruit. Okay, so that's native to Colombia. That means that you know, this fruit, it comes from that country, okay? You can find it grown there. Yes, we can grow it in other countries, but it's native to Colombia. In Brazil, the white cocoa, which is a Brazilian fruit, uh, fruit or the sugarcane flower broccoli. In Peru, we've got the papa nativas, if I'm saying that correctly. So again, these are fruits and vegetables native to those countries. So I want to ask you, what fruit or vegetable is native to your country? So we have um, from uh, Chile, we have from Vietnam and China. Yes. So you tell me what fruit or vegetable is native to your country. So we'll go with Chile first. Do you know of any fruit that's or vegetable native to your country? No? Mm -hmm. I'll give you a moment maybe to search it and then we'll come back and talk about it. Okay, so if we go to Chile, what fruit or vegetable is native that comes from your country? It's very known that this comes from your country. How do I spell that? M U uh, M A Q U E I Yes, M-A-Q-U-I. Yes, and is this a fruit or vegetable? It's a fruit. Okay, so let's have a look. So this is from chili fruit. So this is a fruit native to chili. I'm going to have a look at some images. Oh, nice. So it's a berry. It's a type of berry, a purple berry. Very small purple berry. And do you have it maybe as a drink? Can you eat the fruit by itself? So? So it's a super fruit. So that means that it is so, so healthy. It's got a lot of good vitamins, minerals, stuff in it, really good stuff. So Mackie? Maki, yeah, very. And what did you want to tell me about it? Ah, so you can eat it dried, like a dried fruit. Yep. Oh, fresh. Okay, good. Beautiful. So I've never seen this one, um, a type of berry, but there you go. That is native to Colombia, uh, to Chile. Oh, it's in lip balms. Ah, okay. So it's very common in lip balms. Okay, it's like Australia, we put honey in our lip balm because we produce a lot of honey. So um, something that's native to Australia is um, the honey, especially that comes from Kangaroo Island because it can only, this type of honey can only be found in Australia. So it's called the... Um, so it's these type of bees, lig liguarian honey, and 
uh, the Liguarian uh, honey bee. And so this type of honey is um, it's not a fruit or vegetable, but it's still a product that we can eat and it's very native to Australia and we use it in our lip balms, just like what you said for your, um, so this one, we do it a lot in our lip balm. You can eat it just fresh, like what you said, um, but yes. Okay, good. Uh, Vietnam, what do we have that's native to your country? How do I spell it? So, I, R, yes, A, M, B, U, T, A, N, N, this one, Rambutan. Is it a fruit or honey? Uh, sorry, is it a fruit or vegetable? So this is Vietnam. So this is a this is a, a fruit. Oh, yes, I know this one. I didn't know it's from Vietnam. So native to Vietnam and rambutan. Rambutan is the name. Okay, this is so sweet. And, and I know because uh, we have it here in Australia and you can put it in drinks. You can have it in a drink. It's so nice. Ram butan. Okay, so this is a fruit. So thank you for sharing that. It's a fruit. China. Oh, yes, L-E. H I C H I L I T C H I and is it a fruit or vegetable? It's a fruit. Uh let's have a look. It's a fruit. Okay. So this is a fruit li lychee. Lychee, this one. Is this the same to the one in Vietnam? Or different? Different, different. Lychee, yes, I know this one. I didn't know that this was uh, native to China. Okay, southern China and southeast Asia. It's a small, round fruit. I love this one as well. Very sweet, really nice. Yes. So this is a fruit that is native to China, the lychee. So we spell it L-Y-C-H. Double E. So L Y C H double E. Litchi. Okay. And Anjali, can you tell me a fruit or vegetable which is native? That means that it comes from your country, from Colombia. Um, I think the guayaba. How do is, I spell that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, is G G U. You? Uh, y. A. Y. A. Yeah. B and A. B. A. A. Uh -huh. And is this a fruit or vegetable? Is a fruit. Fruit. Guayaba. Is that correct? Yes, did <laughs> Guayaba. Oh, this is nice. Guayaba. Mm, is it sweet? Very sweet or sour? It's sweet, yeah. Mm, guayaba. That looks so, so good. Um, okay, good. So thank you for sharing that. So now we know um, that we have lots of fruits and vegetables which can be native to certain countries, okay? Um, now, I wanted to look at a part of a plant. So when we have a, a plant, let's have a look at what parts there are. 
So let's start from the ground. So the brown is called the soil or the ground. And we have the roots. Okay, so you could see this is the root of any plant or vegetable or fruit tree. Okay, the roots, they go under the ground. Then it will come up. You'll see that there's a stem. That's the part that comes up from the ground. You'll have a leaf usually depending. Um, it will look different to every plant and every fruit and vegetable. Uh, and then you'll have the fruit, okay, or the vegetable. Some vegetables, they're under the ground, like potato. Uh, they're called just like uh, root vegetables. Or you'll have vegetables above the ground. And sometimes you have flour that's uh, a part of the plant as well. Okay, so that's the part of um, the plant. So let's have a look at some of these key vocabulary. So if I say, when you answer a question correctly, you win one point. So I'm on question two. What does a point mean? A point is a way of counting. Okay, so a point is like, we, like when you have a football game. And, you know, how many, you know, points did Argentina get? How many scores? How many points? How many goals did they kick? So a point is when you count. Uh, corn is a type of cereal. Cereal is a type of plant which produces grains such as wheat or rice. Okay, cereal. So, you know, in Australia, this is very popular for breakfast. Um, and with this cereal, you can have the rice, um, grains, wheat. Okay, so this is cereal. Okay, different types of cereal. And one type of cereal um, or one type of grain is wheat and rice. So you know rice and wheat. Uh, hold a flower by its stem. So if you were to hold a flower by its stem, it's this part here, which means the long, thin part of a plant. That's called the stem, the long, thin part of a plant. Pull up the plant and you can see the root. So the roots are the part of the plant under the ground, the root. In autumn, the leaves of a tree turn brown and fall off. So the leaves are the green things on a tree or plant, the leaves. And the final score in the match has 2-1. So the final score means the number of points at the end of the game. Okay, so now we are going to watch a video. Um, and in the video, uh, we're going to see that there's going to be some questions. So we're going to look at lots of vocabulary for fruit and vegetables and about the structure of the plant, okay? So let's answer these questions. Let's watch it and try and answer these questions. So we want to know what are three types of food you can make from wheat, okay? I'll show you what wheat is again. So this is wheat. You've got wheat, which you can make. Um, rice is another type of, um, okay, so this is wheat. Okay, you make flour from it. You make it into a powder. You've got flour. Okay, so that's what the, the plant looks like and then you collect it grind it up make it into flour you have flour okay so let's watch the video and uh, there's lots of questions which country has the most type of potatoes do you eat the stem leaf or root of asparagus and celery okay have a look at the video see what an asparagus is one of my favorite celery and we know the structure, stem, leaf, 
root. Let's have a look one more time. Stem, leaf, root. Okay, because we can eat a certain part of the vegetable. Maybe it's the root. You can eat the root of a vegetable or the stem of a vegetable or the leaf of a vegetable. Okay, the leaf is like lettuce. Okay, so let's watch the video and answer these questions. Okay, so here are the answers to the World Food Quiz. Starting with question one for three points. The answers were flour, bread and pasta. So welcome to the World Food Quiz. There are nine questions and 13 points in total, so let's start. Ready? Question one. The two most popular cereals in the world are wheat and rice. What are three types of food you can make from wheat? They are on your screen now. Write them down for three points. Question 2. There are around 4,000 types of potatoes. Which country has the most types? Is it A. China, B. Peru or C. Italy? For questions 3, 4 and 5, do you eat the stem, the leaf or the root of asparagus or celery? Lettuce or cabbage? Turnip or carrot? Question 6. For two points, what are these two examples of fruit? And the seventh question is about other types of fruit like strawberries and grapes, pineapple and bananas, and pears and apples. And what are these two fruits? Write them down. Other types of plants are an important part of the human diet in different parts of the world. For example, beans, seaweed and mushrooms. For question 8, what type of plant on the screen makes our food hot? And finally, question 9, what type of drink can you make from this type of bean? Okay, so there are three types of food you can make from wheat. You can make flour. As I said, that's what you use to make cakes, uh, sweets, uh, bread. You can make bread with um, wheat and pasta. Which country has the most types of potato? Peru, your neighbor. <laughs> and which do you eat the stem, leaf of asparagus or celery? You eat the stem, okay? The asparagus and celery, you eat this part of it. Do you eat the stem, leaf or root of lettuce and cabbage? The leaf, okay? The cabbage and lettuce is the leaf part. And do you eat the stem, leaf or root of turnip or carrot? You eat the root. Carrots is a root vegetable. And what are red and purple type of fruits? You should have tomatoes, that's red, and even there's purple tomatoes, yeah, yellow tomatoes, and eggplant. Now, I know that that's the American English. In Australia, we actually use the American English. We say eggplant. Aubergine was the other word, but we don't really use that one, aubergine. Okay, so they're the t same type, uh, they're the same um, vegetable, but we use the American English and we say eggplant in Australia. Okay, but if you see aubergine, that they're exactly the same uh, thing. 
And which last two fruits did you see on the screen? You should have seen orange and lemon. And which type of plant in the screen that makes food hot and spicy? Chilies. Yep, you, you'll know from South America, you're very big with chilies. You love your chilies. Ha Habiana, I think is that a type of chili? Habiana, hab chili? Yeah, is there a chili called... Um, Havana. I know Mexico use a lot of chili. Havana chili. Sorry, not Havana. Uh, this one, habanero chili. Yes. Yes, one of my favorites. Okay, so, um, and what did what can we make a drink from? The bean of coffee. We use the bean to make coffee, the drink. Same as with the cocoa. You use the cocoa bean to make chocolate. Okay, let's look at um, some of these words. Porridge vocab. So porridge is a famous Scottish food. It is made with oats, which is a type of cereal. Okay, you can also have oat milk. That's very popular now. When we order coffee, we order oat milk. The British use the French word aubergine, but it's called an eggplant in the USA and Australia. Okay, we're on question six. Number three, most people eat the root of the turnip, but the leaves are also very good for you. A tomato plant has a tall stem with lots of flowers and fruit. We know that flour is made from wheat and you can make bread with it, okay? You can make bread, pasta, flour. And seaweed is a traditional, uh, is traditional in countries uh, by the sea like Japan and Korea. That's what they use to make their um, sushi, seaweed. Okay, um, let's do number seven together. So we have broccoli. If you know what broccoli is, the green uh, vegetable, you eat the stem and the flower of broccoli. Okay, broccoli. Potato, as I said, it's a root vegetable. Potato and carrots, they're root vegetable. But broccoli, you eat the stem and flower. Okay, I'll just quickly show you broccoli. Okay, so we're practicing our vocabulary for fruits and vegetables. So broccoli, it's in stir fry. This is the, um, this is broccoli. So you eat the stem and the flower part. Cauliflower is another type of uh, vegetable. Zucchini, okay. Cassava, cocoa, papaya. Is from Africa. From the Middle East, we have figs and pomegranate. Okay, figs, pomegranate. I'll quickly show you some images. Figs. This is in season right now. So right now, uh, you'll find lots of figs. Uh, you know this one, figs? Yeah, figs. And pomegranate. Pomegranate is this fruit, one of my favorite to drink. I like to drink this one. Okay, pomegranate is this one. Okay, so this is native to the Middle East, pomegranate. Uh, passion fruit, mango, plums, soursop, guava, zapote. Mamon chilio. I don't know if I said that right. That's a Spanish line. Loquat. Okay, loquat is a very interesting one. Maybe you don't know the name, but this is uh, what it looks like. You'll know when you see it. Loquat. Okay, this one. 
Yeah, you know, when you see the picture, low quat, low quat. I love it, one of my favorites. Okay, and yeah, lots of different types. We have a saying in English. We say two peas. So this is the pea. You know, the. I'll show you the image of the peas. So this is the peas. You use in stir fries, lots of different types of, um, you can just eat it fresh. So you know this one, peas? Yeah, these are called peas. So we have a saying in English. We say um, two peas in a pod. So that means when two people are like very similar. You say, oh my God, me and my sister, we're like two peas in a pod. It means like we're like twins. We're, we're the same. We like the same things. We look the same. We talk the same, whatever. Um, if two people are very close, you know, like best friends, you could say you guys are like two peas in a pod. Okay, so that's an interesting um, saying that we have and it's got like a vegetable uh, in it. Now, do you have a saying in your country that uses a vegetable or fruit? Okay, so we're sharing expressions or sayings that have the words of fruits or vegetables in them. So as I said, in English, we say two peas in a pod, which means that two people are like very close, the same. Okay, peas. In Spanish, what do we have? Angeli, do you have uh, an expression or saying in Spanish? Yeah, teacher. In Colombia, say, uh, fin my better better health is to find to find a partner. <laughs> Think my better half is to find a partner. Yeah. <laughs> But, but where's the vegetable? I need the word vegetable or like oh, a fruit. Is is uh with orange. Ah, um is, yes. Find my better uh similar well like orange. Ah, like the word orange. Me, 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 metal? Mm, uh, one moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can yeah, tell yeah. me in Spanish. Orange. Yeah. <laughs> in Spanish is encontrar mi media naranja. Yeah, yeah. Ar ar yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> ah, that's interesting. So it's got the orange. Um, that's it. That's very interesting. And in English, it translates to, my, yeah. I think my better half <laughs> is to find a partner. That's very interesting with the orange. Thank you for sharing that. Um, okay, do we have another okay. one? Spanish from Javiera? No? Okay, I'll come back. Uh, Vietnamese, did we have a saying? Do you have one? No? I'll come back. Yes. Yes, at 6.45. Yes. Uh, China. Do you have a saying that has like a fruit or vegetable word in it? Uh, Angeli, can you write me that saying in Spanish in the chat box? Yeah, of course, did you? Yep. Yes. Each person go home. What was the beginning? Pumpkin. Oh, <laughs> pumpkin. So pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin. Yeah, pumpkin, pumpkin. Each person go home. Each person goes home. And what does it mean? Like, that's very interesting. Okay, I'll get, maybe I'll get Angeli to write that for me. Um, Angeli, can you write the pumpkin one in Spanish for me as well? <laughs> I like the. Encontrar mi media nar naranja. There we go. Yeah, naranja so, is orange. <laughs> yes. So this word is orange in Spanish. And you can see 
It's like the English one, peas. This was spat orange. Think my better half is to find a partner. And can you write me um, the one pumpkin, pumpkin, each person? Can you write that for me in Spanish? And I'll quickly show you. Let's see if we can get an image with this one. It's so fun when we have expressions and sayings that, ah, <laughs> look at this one. I like it. <laughs> that is so cute. Is this one a good one? To encontrar. That is so funny. <laughs> that is so funny. Uh, I like it. Mi media. Uh, this is good. Mi media naranja. So what mi media is. Ah, yes, that's right. My other half. That is so good. My other half. Okay. So it's the saying here. Okay, and we have, uh, did you write me, Anjali, the, the um, pumpkin, pumpkin, each person? Can you write that for me in Spanish? Okay, so this was English. Um, pumpkin, pumpkin in Spanish, teacher? Yes. You know this one? Uh, I don't know what, <laughs> but oh. one moment. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah, Javiera said to me something like that, pumpkin, pumpkin. Yeah. Do you have one, Po, from Vietnamese? No? Okay, have a thing. No? No sayings? Oh, okay. So English and Spanish, we like to, we have more. I, We have, um, I can't think of them, but I'll tell you next time. Oh, teacher, yeah, I, I know what is. <laughs> okay. Yeah. In can, Spanish can is... is is like calabaza calabaza cada uno para su casa yes, yes correct yes javier said yes okay can you write that for me in the chat box i love the orange one that is so cute so cute so if you don't speak spanish and you're learning spanish you would think orange i don't understand what it means but when you know a language you know colloquial language. That means the sayings and the expressions. If I read that in Spanish, I would think orange, I don't understand. But when you know, you know, same, if you don't know English and you said two peas in a pod, you think, I don't know what that means. But we know it's an expression to say, you know, people are like similar, like twins, very close to each other. You know, you can't go without. Okay, so this is the last saying we'll look at today. Um, so pumpkin is calabaza, calabaza, kado una para su casa. Hmm. Uh, it's, a, it's a game as well. Let's have a look at an image. <laughs> Maybe this is the good image, yeah? That is so funny. Copy image and um calabaza, calabaza, kada. I'll just put the image. Okay, so there we have another Spanish one, and it's to do with pumpkin. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, I'll just put that here. There we go. Okay, so that's all what we had time for to today. Um, so we looked at, remember, we looked at a lot of fruits and vegetables that are native, okay, native to a country. And we talked about the type of, uh, we talked about the parts of a plant and yes, then we looked at some sayings and expressions that have the words of a fruit or vegetable in them. So really interesting. Okay, what are we doing next lesson? Next lesson, we are going to be using our past simple. So we're going to be making sentences in the past. We're going to be able to talk about what we did when we were a child, what we did yesterday, what we did last year. So making sure we understand the past simple. 
um, and also making questions, making negative sentences, and also asking, how was your evening? You know, how was your weekend? How was your night? So again, using the past simple. We're also, next lesson, going to look at writing thank you messages. So when we want to tell someone thank you, how do we express in English, in common sayings, you know, to say thank you to someone, you know, in a formal way and in a casual way. And then next lesson, we're also going to be look, looking at objects from the past. So ancient objects, and we're going to talk about them. What's an old object? What did we do with it? What did we have? Okay, so that's all next lesson. Um, I'll see you all next lesson. Now, Anjali, um, see you.